help you log in if, you, if you're not logged in or having issues. Just raise your hands because I have Kevin and Louise here to help. But I did you get, get in, Karen? Did. Karen, did you get in? Yep. Oh, good. Okay. All right, so if you're ready to um, start taking a peek, if you've gotten it in, you can follow me on your computer. Otherwise, we've got Donald Trump set up here, who is uh, the manager for Lady Gaga. <laughs> so this is the screen that you're seeing when you first log in. And in this corner, you're going to see if you have any pending vacation or sick requests from your employer. Um, they're not too relevant at this point. I just kind of thought we'd get in with the real important stuff. There's a couple. There's a couple of terminology pieces that we're going to have to get used to. Um, my timesheet sheet means your employees' timesheets. You go over to this drop down here. You're going to timesheet and that will be your personal timesheet. So dropping there's this little area next to my HR has a drop down. We're gonna have um, documentation posted um, on the website by probably by this weekend. Screenshots and FAQs and things like that. So. So I thought we could start with um, my timesheets, which are your employee timesheets. And when you open that, you may have to load. Once you get in there, you should see a list of your employees. They may not all be in there if they were hired within the last two or three weeks. Um, this also is a training environment, so there are some things that may be not fully functional or fully loaded, but will when we go live. But if you're not seeing all of your employees in this environment, if you're not seeing anybody that, that has been here longer than three weeks, you might give us and shoot us an email, myself or HR, so that we can make sure they're there for you in the live environment. Navigation through the program is obvious. Um, you'll see up here in this corner, this arrow will arrow you. You're going to see one week at a time, and the arrow will take you forward or backward. And if you want to go to a prior, you know, something that's older, you can use this calendar and arrow back and go to whatever time period you're looking uh, to see. Did you have a question? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. One of the differences in this program is we're only going to be able to see, access, and edit one week at a time. And that's also true with approvals. You're going to have to approve one week, arrow forward, and approve the next week. So I did some shifts for Lady Gaga. Now, your employees, um, you know, depend how they keep their time may look different than this one, um, but they're all essentially the same type of navigation and the same way to edit. Um, I wanted to show a couple things with Lady Gaga. First of all, if you needed to make any edits to an employee timesheet, um, if you hover over the day, you'll see um, a red X which will delete that shift, up so we will edit it. And the plus, that just means you can add another shift there. And you can pretty much, if you have people that are in out, you can enter as many, just about as many um, in and outs as you want on a particular day. I think it's good to know there's four ways we have people in and out. So what you're seeing here may may not be the same way your employees are clocking in and out. 
we have time in, time out. These are people, um, employees who are punching in and punching out at the start and end of their shift. The second way is sometimes you just go in and you just have to enter how many hours you worked for the day. So maybe it's just you're going in and entering six or eight. The third way um, is for our FRE employees. They're going in and logging in. You know, I worked from nine to two at this cost center and then I worked from three to eight at this cost center. So I, I, we call that uh, in, an, in and out entry as opposed to time clock. And so. we have salary employees so that when you go to log on and look at your salaried employees, it's pretty much pre-populated. You'll just see 40 hours pre-populated in that timesheet for the week. But this is just one way that, that we had to demo because we couldn't demo all four ways with one manager. Right. And essentially, though, even if their time entry methods are different than this, again, the, the navigation and the way to change things is still pretty similar. So that's probably going to be relevant is editing. Um, when you're seeing an employee, if you know they worked at a different cost center and didn't clock in properly or didn't use um, the correct the correct code, like, like people that have uh, employees that do sleep shifts, you're going to edit. And when I hit the pencil, this is what came up. The first um, drop down is for the different cost centers. Now we have to set up the cost centers in HR or payroll in order to access them. Everybody doesn't have access to all cost centers. So if you have an employee that worked at a different cost center they're not set up for, they can center their time and we can just um, have HR or myself enter that cost center for them and you can go back and just use the to change it. Um, other issue, the other drop down is different jumps. And one of the nice things about this program is it does have um, the actual pay rates associated with those jobs if they have different pay rates. So, you know, in innovations we want um, a sleep option that's what will be here if you have anybody that works in a supervisory capacity at sometimes at a different pay rate, that'll be in this drop down. And the, we're not working in this environment with these next two drop downs, so you can disregard those. And when you click on the clock, if you're entering actual time in or time out, it's enough if you say, um, you know, 7A is 7 a.m. So I just type 7 a and tab and it notes at 7 a.m. So if it's correct, I just click outside of it and save. And the, um, if you click here, if this was a wrong shift, I can just delete it. So the nice thing with this is, is you'll actually be able to see the pay codes and how much um, this employee worked. Um, and the employees will have access to this also, even if they are on the time clock. You can go down the week and go to this button, which is View Pay. And it gives you the details. You can look at the weekly view, the daily view. And retros is something we're not using. But really, it's kind of nice, because if you click on one day, you can square and the, the number of hours and the pay rate. The other important thing to note is for here you'll see a totals tab. The totals at the bottom. Those totals are only for hours worked. They won't include sick time. They won't include holiday pay. But if you want to see holiday pay or sick time, you can click in. Uh, you pay, and give you the totals for all the hours as whatever pay rates they're being paid. Show them how to load all their employees. So that they're seeing all those different yeah, I, under load. Yeah, I said at first if you're not seeing all your employees, try clicking that load button. Say that one more time. 
If you're not seeing all your employees, click the button. And Jody, because you're going to have people in multiple call centers, I would assume all of your folks are different call centers, so yours is a little trickier because you're going to have to go to the uh, org up chart here. right here on the top left, and you're going to have to actually go to each call center to see each person in each call center. So most supervisors, because most supervisors are over one call center, you're going to be able to see everybody in one fail swoop. For those, someone like Mark, someone like Jody, if you have people in multiple call centers, you will actually have to use that org, um, org chart up there to actually go to each um, location or cost center that you oversee and actually click in. You may be able to, and, and I'm going to double check this when I back there. We're going to talk to them about adding a button at the top that allows you to see everybody, even if they're in different cost centers. We think that that just may be a setup issue and that you may be able to. So that's on my list of things to check in. Um, with Iridian and see if that's a setup um, feature they can give us. So if you have employees in different cost centers, they'll all show up for you. But right now, you can only see them one at a time. Anybody have any questions about that? Editing. That um, in this training environment that I'm, unfortunately they didn't set up for me. There's another another option, and you'll see it actually on your timesheet, but it should be available on your employees' timesheets as well. So I want to show you that by going into this manager's timesheet, clicked up here at this button, and I'm clicking employee timesheet. And if it doesn't pull up, hit load. But when when I hover over a date. Oh, not giving. Hmm. You have this button here. Yeah. Does yours say me? Okay. that I'm hovering over now, I clicked in here. This gives me the option to add a pay adjustment. And this is something that will be, and when we go live for sure, available on your employee timesheets as well as your own. A pay adjustment would be to add sick or vacation time, jury duty, bereavement leave, that kind of thing. And it allows you to enter just a number of hours. Work, pull the default, or the drop-down down. The default is work, but you can change that to sick and hit close. And you go, you've entered, uh, did it take? Hours. And that's something that you can do manually yourself um, on your time sheet. But if you happen to use the sick and vacation request, it'll automatically populate that for you. One of the things that we found in this program is we build a rule, you know, salaried employees are only supposed to take sick and vacation in half day increments. This is going to let you take any in increment that you want. So unfortunately, we couldn't that rule in, so it's just something that we'll have to trust that you know to use half-day increments. However, if you do use the sick and vacation request form, that will only allow you to take half-day increments um, for sick and vacation. Yeah.
calculate vacation for all those days. So if any of those days they don't want to be paid out of their vacation, they should they should shorten the vacation request and just you'll know to make sure those the rest of the days are unpaid, which they will default to unless you're using schedules. They will have hours that default anyway. So um, just have them request only the, the days they're looking to use vacation or stick on. I'm going to show you in just, just a sec. So, and I recommend saving after each entry just to keep, make that you don't uh, have any problems and can't find where they are. Although there are red, red little X's if it does find an, a problem with any shifts, especially with your employees. If time is overlapped, you know, they clock out at 1 on May and 12, uh, uh, it starts at 12 o'clock, so it'll let them enter that, but it'll be red X. Um, so to get to the main Screen, you can my day. Um. Oh. Give me a minute. I've my work. Okay, so when I clicked up here and selected my work, that brings up. Um, a vacation request form for you, and you'll get new. And this window opens default to your name. The reason drop down will give you your options for sick, vacation, duty, bereavement, that kind of thing. So I've looked again where you were because there's other options over here where she is in that far right. You drop it down, and that's under my work. new is what opens up that window. I'm selecting vacation and I can select a number of days. Again, it should just let us only use half day increments here. And there's a place to put comment. But what you have to do to submit that form is click on save automatically go into your registers inbox and that will be shown here um,
note is when we're doing, when we're, um, as supervisors, when you're approving the first time, you know, because we go live on Monday, that first pay period, so the week that you're approving timesheets will be um, January 4th. And you have to, because we won't have any sick and vacation balances loaded in day 4th yet, until the following week, that you will have to still use that, you know, one last time you use that supervisor report that put out on the supervisor's folder that has the sick and vacation balances. It'll be, you know, we have to use it one more period and then we're done because everything will be loaded in here and you'll be able to, as you're approving timesheets, you'll be able to make sure that they have the balances um, and that they requested it. And that's how we're rolling it out to employees that after that date, they should be requesting any sick or vacation time through the tool that you as managers, as you're approving it, you can make sure that they have the appropriate balances making sure that they're not going negative because the system will allow them to go negative because it's built into our policy to allow it. And so at least as managers now, you'll be able to, to see that ahead of time to, and be able to approve or not approve it. So we expect the vacation and sick report, and we'll send out an email the day it goes in. Um, we, we're expecting it to be in there by the 8th, yeah. January 8th. Yeah. So I've just submitted a request as the employee. So now when I log back in as a manager, that's the first thing I see in this upper left-hand corner or vacation and sick request. Another navigation trick in this um, this program is whenever you see one of these black boxes, if you click on it, it maximizes that screen. And then to minimize it, you just click back here. But what you see here is a request from Lady Gaga for a vacation day. And I can either just approve it or delete it. But if you want to see her vacation and sick balances, I hit that pencil. And when it's up, you'll see down here her rules, what she's used, and her remaining balance. So if I approve this, it's automatically going to drop, even though it's in the future, it's going to note that it's from vacation balance that these are pending hours like that, that you shouldn't access. Are there any questions on that vacation and sick? Yeah. What's the budget? Um, let's say that they decided they don't take them that day anymore. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to change it, how do you modify that approval? So the, for the phone is if they want to modify that. So let's say she doesn't want to take the 19th off as a vacation day. Is So it still shows up here in my list, so I'm deleting it, and the status is now X, and then remove it. I'm going to work through that and make sure the keystrokes are correct, because it's, it's um, acting a little differently than I've seen it before, so I still have that. It, it was still showing up in my box, so I just hit the X, and that means it was denied, so I've removed it, but double check um, the instructions when we get the manual out because I want to walk through and look, make sure it behaves the same and if it's different for the different types of timekeeping your employees use, I'll make note of that. So up until it's approved, if it's always in a pending status, you can, the employee can go in and change it. Once it's approved, then it's going to kind of hit the timesheet and you as the manager, you know, they can go in and, and say, no, I didn't take vacation that day because I didn't end up needing to or, or I had to work, you'll, you know, they'd be able to change it on the timesheet and it won't count as that or you as the manager will catch it as well. But up until it is, you know, approved by manager because it is a workflow, so it will go in and it goes to your manager. Once it was approved, it would be in that message box saying, hey, your vacation day was approved by your manager on such and such date and then you know, like, okay, I'm ready, you know, it's official. And this take that message day. box you're going to use for a, a few different things. Like this is where if you've requested a report, it's go up in your message center under report. Um, more questions? 
questions on that, or you want me to have it? I really was um, interested in showing you the delegation feature. And yesterday in our training, some of the um, people that were trying it were getting not getting um, the, the correct list of people they may delegate to. So I just want to put that cat on, but I'll show you because it is. And this again, a matter of setup for this training environment. We haven't. They haven't dated all the things that we've requested in the training environment, but they will be there in the live environment. But I go to the drop down right here, me, and the delegation is one of the options. And again, it's a request, so I'm going to hit new. And it's gonna, this is the drop down list that I was telling you for employees. Some people were not able to access peers that they want to delegate to, but was for some reason. So again, it's just a... Are they coming as Ah. <laughs> so it brought the search filter so you can look for the person you want to delegate to. And when you do, let me show you this filter, because this you'll use throughout the program, this filter. And it's pretty nice if you just type in their name or part of their first name, part of their last name, it'll search on every. Um, so yes, I had uh, several people open my typed mark. So I would just select him. Input the dates. And save it. Delegate is, you're going to be on leave and you want another manager to take over uh, your people for a certain amount of dates. One thing that I I'm not sure how this is going to look when we go live, but right now it's giving me all employees. So I think ideally we, we would just want other supervisors, managers, peers in there, but it give all employees. And I think we're going to have to talk, even if it's an option, that, that we can filter those out because there may be instances where we do have an employee that's not currently a manager that we may want to take over our timesheet. So I think we're going to have to make sure that, you know, as a process, we want all employees in there or just supervisors. And then we'll send a message to the other supervisor, and we'll have it'll be in their message box. They'll have to accept that delegation. So the one that we want to know is. That message box, it doesn't go to your email address. It is really only the message box within Dayforce. So you want an email, you, and I think you'll find it easier because you're going to put yourself in this system more than you were prior because you're going to be able, you're going to have the access to all of your employees and you're going to, you know, be requesting, you know, looking at time requests, looking at timesheets more regularly and have that access. So I don't think it's going to be hard for you. I think you'll, get, you'll probably be in the system daily. Um, because you'll have so much access this time. Could you show me how to get this message? Sure. Just this, that mailbox. This little little mailbox right here. So when we get all of our vacation and sick things um, taken care of and we've got our time sheets ready to go at the end of the pay period, I did want to show you how to approve in um, approve sheet. In this program, it's called Authorize, and you're to just you're going to do it for each week. But basically, I've got this week of December first with words in there. So I'm going to click on her name, and that's going to highlight the whole week. And I just click on Authorize. And see a little checkbox comes up. 
But again, since we're only working with one week at a time, oh, I didn't save that. I'll have to click forward to the second week of that pay period and authorize again. You're going to want to do that with your own timesheets. Again, back, my timesheets are my employees, and employee timesheet is my timesheet. To click, um, you click and drag and authorize my sheet. Can you see that I have some time sheets and my employees? <laughs> where is mine? Yours is called employees. And is it top down? Oh, it is confusing. Yeah. Your, yeah, my time sheets are your employees, and then <laughs> employee time, time sheet is you. And all I can say is this was written by a Canadian, so maybe <laughs> things are <laughs> differently there. <laughs> they have different positions. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny. Can I click authorize if there's nothing happening? Does that mean there's more in the screen? And will there be a success or a thanks or a thanks? And you're not, so if you're not getting that, you're not getting that check mark once you authorize. So uh, if you've already authorized it, there'll be a little check mark. Yeah, and if you think, yeah, it could be the training environment. Yeah, there's no changes to save. 
I'm sorry, I don't know <laughs> what has happened here, but it's not giving me the check mark. Even though I already authorized. Yeah, let me see. Well, you know, it would be different because I was in the um, employee timesheet, my timesheet, so back to Lady Gaga. So yes, it's going to let me and change a shift that I've authorized. See right here, I see this check mark, but it's giving me the option to change. So when you want to no. No. Let me ask that because I am not sure. So yeah, it's let me make a change and I'm gonna save it. Even though I've authorized, it has let me make a change. How we do that for the Jenna just asked how she can unauthorize a sheet for an employee. Go back in and make a change, and I'm gonna have to find out because I don't know that one. So did you show maybe some time sheets that might errors on it? Yeah. What that will look like? Yeah. I fixed all the errors yesterday. So I, I, what not, I noticed Mr. Glass like we can't demo it. Yeah. What we uh, what we did yesterday with this employee is I had entered a few um, errors on her time sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new shift that overlaps with the other one. Okay, so what I've done here is add a ship a second shift to her day that overlaps. So she has six AM to five PM and then four PM to ten PM. So you have read these red check marks and it's gonna let you save, but it's also gonna flag that that there's an error. And that's one thing you'll wanna look out look at if your employees are entering their of times in and times out. Look for these check marks. Um, that, that just means that there's something that needs to be fixed. If you found the red button up here, it'll tell you what the problem is if it's not obvious. Another nice thing, I don't know if you've had experience with entering times in and times out in Kronos, where if you were just changing positions, you had to end your work time at 10 p.m. and then start a sleep shift at 10 p.m. Kronos always made you enter 10.01 because uh, you couldn't have the exact same times. This, this program is smart enough to know that you can change at 10 p.m. to a different function, like sleep or something. Then also for those sleep shifts for those site supervisors, um, you don't have to clock in at, at, you know, clock out at 12 p.m. and then clock in on the next day at, at 12.01. It's actually, you really can do a sleep shift from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and it will carry all those hours into the next day for you. 
so Corona had them clocking in and clocking out at, on those different dates. Yeah, Michelle re re will remember how you, when you were entering a sleep shift too, you had to clock them out at midnight and then at 12.01 start their time if you were doing it manually. This program will let us um, into the next day and it'll automatically add the shift um, the hour after midnight to the next day. But let me show you. So this one is doing a sleep shift here at 10 p.m. And it goes 7 a.m. About it knows that that 7 a.m. Do you see how that 7 a.m. is in italics? And if you click on View Pay for Sunday, you're going to see those seven hours of sleep added to Sunday. They won't show up on Monday. And the same is true when you cross the, uh, you know, the pay period Sunday night to Monday morning. It'll automatically add those hours after midnight to the next week. And we'll show up on that um, card next week. Week. What you won't see, you won't see the actual shift on Monday. Let me actually show you. I'll just put another one in. And you know, be careful too because when you add sleep time or a different um, pay rate, different function, you're going to double check because it kind of leaves that last one you used as a default. So if you go add awake time, you're going to want to make sure you change it back to awake. It. So this is 7 a.m. What I've done is added an overnight shift for her on Sunday night, starting at 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. So if I roll forward to the next week, on Monday you don't see those hours when you first look at it, but if you go to Monday, yeah, at the bottom, bottom and in view pay, you see those seven hours. But yeah, like Mia said, your is that there's seven hours already on this Monday. So any questions on that? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to show you some of the other features. It's going to be nice to have. You're going to have earning statements here when you first log in. You're going to have um, your place to change it, your tax, your direct deposit. All of that's going to be at this one login. So we're combining Kronos and Paylocity and at least one less password to remember. Yeah? Will employees also have the option in the upper left corner to select their different cost centers that they, they might work for? No. Supervisors, if you're supervising more than one cost center, you will have more cost centers over here. Well, As an employee who works for different cost centers. Now, that will actually be when you're doing the shift. So, up everybody, if you have two two cost centers, we have everybody set up to go on go live, so they should have it here, and that's where that's where okay, we were saying in this down. See, she has two cost centers. She can work in 360 and 545. Mm -hmm. But we will need you to do it go live. If there are people who don't have those two cost centers set up, or um, then let us know and we'll set those up. But yes, yeah, so we pretty much if, if you're already in that boat and you're already um, if you're already in two cost centers, you should go into the live environment and see all your options. That's why if you're um, if you're a financial counselor, they're going to go in and they're always going to have that sleep option that's automatically set up. If they're an FRE employee, they go in and they're going to see um, a documentation rate that the, that we already have set up. So it's, it's so really what you would have to do is if we have a new person who's going to start who needs to be set up in a second cost center, that's when you'll have to ask HR to set them up. Yeah. My question is, um, is the instructions that the shop that covered today will cover how to pull a report every month or pulling, you know, how much sick, how much vacation, how much holiday time, and then? I'm going to show you. Yeah, 
you right now. And thing too, when we go live, it's a live environment. If you have employees that you know work in different cost centers and you don't see them showing up for them, it's sub please let us know. We're doing our best to capture second and third jobs. Um, but it's but not. It's, it wasn't. A, it's not 100 percent. The way it, it was in paylocity and the way that we had to do it was very, very time intensive and manual. So we don't expect that to be 100 percent. And that's probably the only thing in this system that I could say at Go Live is probably not 100 percent. Is if you had cost centers or other cost centers that you need to charge to, it may not all be in there. So they this will, FRE would have, could have a different rate as opposed to this group home. And you'll see it in view pay too. Like when you're looking at their time sheet and you click on that day that they worked and go to view pay, you're going to see the different pay rates that they're being paid. And, and the number so, of hours and the total dollars too. So if Lady Gaga's primary job is as an FRE, then Jen is most likely going to approve the timesheet. However, look, if Lady Gaga logs in and she's logging in hours to 545 group home, um, that's Chris DeRosa. Chris DeRosa is that Connor's manager. He's also going to be able to see any of those hours that she has posted. So he's actually seeing the hours she's also worked. So that's, the, that's the great news, and that's a that's an upset from what we've had in Cronus as well, because if you were a secondary manager, you had no idea what they were posting to your cost center, and that first manager was approving it. We don't want, though, is if you're the second manager and it's not their primary position, we don't want you authorizing the timesheet. We really would rather that the primary manager is still authorizing the timesheet, because that's where the majority of the hours are most likely worked. And you had a question? Yeah, how do we allocate overtime if you have an employee that works in like that's something that I'm going to still have to take care of moving um, the hours from one cost to overtime from one to another. Um, so we're still going to do that with that form and email. Um, I'm going to make sure that I think I've gone that with my Ceridian guide to make sure that that is something that you don't have access to. But if it turns out you do, I'll send you instructions on how to do it. But I'm pretty sure you you won't, you'll have to have me to hear of it, okay? I'm going to go, in and I'm gonna go look in, um, there's, top, there's this far right, and these three buttons mean that there's other programs in here. So what I need to do, and what we're going to ask everybody do, to do on Monday, even employees, is to go in and hit the Me tab, and we want you to look at your profile. And now, if you go in, it's going to show everything that you're in. And these are the things that we want you to check to make sure you look right, that my address is correct, that, you know, my primary, you know, job location, my job title, my department is correct. Um, and then what it won't show, because we don't have, we won't have any sick and vacation time balances available, but this is going to be great because as employees, once this is in there, you're able to always see what your, what your sick and vacation balances is right away as an employee. Employee, which would be extremely helpful. And you'll see that for your employees as well. Like you can, there's different places that you'll see their vacation and sick balances. And I think as Mia said, there are reports for that too. Um, go in here, you know, this is going to be your timesheet. Um, so then this is where you're approving your timesheet. <laughs> but also under me, my work. I go to my details um, tab. This is going to go ahead and say um, this is about me, Donald Trump, and this is basically going to have all the stuff that you would have had. So if you had an emergency contact in day four, your emergency contacts are going to be in here. We're also going to be uploading photos. So those great EcoPath photos that you have all taken, you'll be able to, uh, will be in there at some point. However, the good news is you can change it. So you can say, I want to upload a photo, and then I can grab my photo and upload it. We just ask you not to put a picture of your dog or your cat there. Make sure it's a picture of you. I can't get to this now because it... <laughs> the other 
piece. Let's see, where did I want to go? It will be. So however your employees are set up now in Kronos is pretty much how they'll see it in, in Ceridian, in Dayforce. Yeah, so again, with all these data transfers, you know, there's room for error. So we're really imploring people to double check everything to make sure something, you know, that we don't have anything that came over incorrectly, like holiday hours. Where's my form? I'm looking for my form. Oh, here it is. No. Like that. I wanted to mention, oh, Jody, you had a question? I wanted to go in that I lost was went under me. I went to profile, which where I was showing you this is all the information about yourself. But if I needed to change anything, there is this tab here called forms. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to be able to go in and here's the things that I can figure out about me. This is personal. So I'm going to go in and look at my address and make sure that my address is correct. Um, if I needed to make a change, I would be able to go ahead and submit it, and it would just automatically be made to the system. So if I was back to me again, profile these forms again, um, there's going to be information in here on my direct deposit. If I need to change my direct deposit or verify it, my emergency contacts is in here my name and marital status. So if I end up getting married and need to be able to um, add my spouse to my benefits, this, these are all the tabs that you're going to make those changes. And when you submit these forms, some of them are already set up with a pre-populated workflow. So something like a, a, a marriage status isn't just going to go feed into the system. It would actually go to HR so that, that we wouldn't be notified to be able to open an event for you as an open enrollment so that you can add your spouse so that you can add your dependent child that maybe you just gave birth to. That's all going to be over here. Once you submit it, and once it's actually approved, because maybe as a manager you're submitting a compensation change, and so we're submitting that, and it has to go to your manager. Your manager is going to approve it. And then it go to HR to approve it as well. And then it might go to payroll to approve it. But once it goes through that whole loop and gets done, you're going to see that message in your message center in your mailbox that said that change was approved. And so you actually know, okay, I made a change to Ashley's pay, and I, it's approved, and so now I can tell her because I know everything is fine. I know it went through, and I know it got submitted. All that, yeah. <laughs> All of this in the live system. So we are in a total train URL environment. It's um, it's as similar as we can get it, but it's not there yet because this is still we're on the live environment. We're not as focused on this training environment. We want to give you something to look, but it's not even close to what we're expecting for live. That's the one thing. And so you'll only have access to this URL until Sunday because Monday you will get the live URL, you will have to log in again, and it will just be Imagine, it'll be your five-digit clock number, but you'll have to log in again with your four-digit you know, four date of birth, just like all employees in the word Imagine, and then reset your password. So after Monday, once you reset that password, you're fine. Um, um, Monday, I did mention, because of the holiday next week, we're off on Wednesday and Thursday, it has to be processed by Tuesday night, and I know we all get our timesheet approvals done Tuesday morning usually. We're asking, because Lynn is going to um, be processing payroll so that I can help everybody with the, the implementation of the new system.
So I just wanted to do a reminder to get your timesheets approved because we are running, doing everything in one day that it normally takes three to get everybody paid the following week. So much appreciated. And any questions or any concerns or additions for payroll, please send them directly to Lynn because I might be out and about helping, you know, people with the, the new system. And then put prudent payroll in here for these two weeks, right? Or you're back in Kronos. Or Kronos you're or Monday, Kronos. yeah, Monday okay. you're approving your Kronos timesheets. So, yeah, it's confusing. Right after. Yeah. Okay. Like, we will be able to log into this on Monday, but your timesheets are going to be in Kronos for the last two weeks and using this Monday forward. So two weeks after we go live is when you're going to be approving your timesheets in the system. On January 4th. Then. Right. Where's my earnings statement? Um, it should have been there. Go, go to my day. Is it not in there? It's not there now. It's, it usually says, um, I think it's in my earnings. There's a tab at the top, and it was there yesterday, so I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> but that's where you're going to see your earnings statements. Your, um, once we have processed the whole year of pay on the system, you'll be able to see your W-2s there so they're ready. So it's all going to be really nice no. to have in one system. But no, his will still be in Paylocity. No, after we... Next year. Yeah, next year. But I'm going to have our, our 20, 2014 um, pay stub and pay W2. Stub. W2. And so that system will shut down on January 30th. So we'll be notifying employees if you need any pay stubs from 2014, if you need your W2, make sure you're pulling it before January 30th. And then, and then we'll take away that link on the employee resources tab because we'll be done with Paylocity. Um, just the cost to bring all data into Dayforce was, was very expensive. And we'll still have access to it. We'll have a PDF file up in the um, payroll office. So it's not that we can't get to it if we need to for you, but we're not going to have it pre-populated into Dayforce. And do you need any hours reports out of Kronos? You know, because Kronos is going away this, when we go live with this. I'm, We'll still have access to Kronos, I will. So if you need any historical data from ours from Kronos, let me know, and I can pull reports that for you. Yeah, there's your earnings tab, and so you'll start to see your first pay stub on that earnings tab on January 13th, which is our first date in payroll, January 13th, 2015. So in the last 20 minutes, just to focus on scheduling. And um, do you think there's anything else we missed? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Did we miss anything? The other piece is this, um, the, the live website will be accessible um, via mobile, mobile phone, so mobile access. So as managers, you should be able to go ahead and download it and approve your timesheets from your phone, see, your, see this information from your phone as well. Um, we have a chance to test that out at all, so we may not announce that until about a week after the next week. After you got a chance years. to get on. Oh, Karen got it on hers. That's well, good. Is mobile access through the web or an app? Through an app. Oh. So the mobile app for your Android and. and Working oh, is what, great. what we've done is that it will. Yeah, Jenna, maybe. You can't clock in and out on there. Yeah. That will be the exception. If you have clock in and clock out employees, they can access it to see their data. They're not going to have the clock in, clock out feature. Yeah. Right. Be able to send messages to their manager on their phone via the mobile app. So, if anybody wants to stick around and look 
at the scheduling a feature if you're interested possibly using it. I know some of you don't have schedules in your department, so it won't be relevant, but, you know, Chantel, that might be something you might be interested in. Um, ben has thought that it was a pretty good scheduling program, and it could, you know, be something that's useful to you, but anybody that wants to see that can stick for another 20 minutes or so, and I'll walk you through it. I would I recommend it just because if you use the scheduling feature, the great thing that it's going to help you do is help you budget for your week. So you can actually see how much it costs in terms of labor for the week. It also helps as a manager to see, yeah, it, it, you know, to, to figure, well, this is how much I'm spending in a week. Is this how much my cost center can afford in, in a week? So even if you're not, even if um, you're not an hourly employee, I still think you should stick around because I think there could be some value to it. So what with the scheduling is it looks a lot like time sheets. I found myself having to remember occasionally that I wasn't in time sheets that I was actually in a schedule. So this is the login page and time sheets are the employee time sheets. My schedules are actually we're creating a schedule for your employees to work. And it looks again like a lot like the um I'm hitting load because that will bring up employees. It does look a lot like the timesheet. Really? Oh no what you know what sheet. No, click no I was schedules. Click view. See on grid view. You're, I think it defaults to the bar view. So click on grid. Click on first. To be on first and then view. So I prefer the grid view just because it, it looks like time sheets, it's a little more comfortable. Our view is, is a little, a little different. And, and I'm able to arrow through to, to the one I'm looking for. And you'll notice it also gives you an unfilled at the top, and that means you can create schedules. Your, all your employees will be here, and you can, you can create the schedule. But if you have Open openings in your schedule, you can actually add them here in this, you know, in this row so that it'll be posted that you have needs for additional shifts to be filled. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones that I put in. is a lot like at time for your employees. Only this is showing you this op the green arrow that I clicked on is me the employee name. It's giving a chance to change her cost center and it's giving the option of it should actually have work and sleep, but it's not showing up there for some reason. But I'm put
apologize, people on the phone. I had to get out of earshot for a minute. But what we're um, talking about was the feature to, um, well, it doesn't like this one for someone, some reason, but let's okay. and say, so one of the things that we were just going over was the copy feature. So if I go to the next week and I hit um, copy, it's going to give me the date that um, I'm going to pick from. And the week. And that gives me the, the same schedule. One of the really important things on this is after you've saved, created your schedule, saved it, you going to want to um, you're going to post the schedule. When you hit post, um, I don't know where Colette went. She was oh, there you are. I am so sorry. <laughs> We've had the room has emptied out, and the people that are still here are clear across the room. So I apologize. Um, so it's putting the schedule is what you um, what will apply it to the employee's timesheet. So sorry. Question? Oh, okay. Posting it will apply it to the employee's timesheet, and then they're clocking in and out. It's going to compare their time clock to the schedule, so you'll it'll show you. There will be little um, icons that will show you if they're late or if they worked longer than their scheduled hours and things like that. So that's going to be really helpful. The other thing I want to say, too, about time clock employees, what you're going to see when they clock in and out, the, the time sheet is going to show the hour round it. To, like if they punched in at 8.04, it's going to show you 8 o'clock. There is another button called raw punch so you can see their actual times if you have any concerns about that. But it's going to round to the quarter hour. Yeah. I have a question about um, schedule creation. Is it something that you do, like, when you show me, or is it something that, like, we have a staff matrix, like a regular workshift that someone does. They always do a schedule program Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They always do a build program um, Tuesday, Friday. Uh-huh. feature. So I, right now I have a schedule for Lady Gaga. 
and it can be for it would be for everybody. The schedule, all you do is click to the next week, go to this top feature, and I'm copying. Oh, what was the date? I think it was the 22nd. It say copy week, and the whole schedule will copy based on that week that you selected. And you'll save it. And what Jody was asking, and I, I know we can do it, we just need the, the steps to do it, but if you just have the same schedule week after week after week, there is a way, and it's called shift rotations, but I have to get the keystroke from my guy at Ceridian. But it's shift rotation, and it basically just keeps copying the same schedule forward. That's how they're doing it with salaried employees because they're set, you know, as a schedule. Salaried employees are set up as a schedule, pre-populated. So he has the system automatically, you know, putting out their schedule two weeks in advance every Sunday night. But I just have to get the keystrokes on how to do that yourself, and I'll make sure I get those, those keystrokes to you. Okay. That is a good question. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. The question was how to print a schedule. Um, you know, I may have to get back to you. I'm sure there's to do that, but I am not seeing it, and I quite honestly, um, it hadn't occurred to me to test that, but certainly there's a way, and I'll get the keystrokes on that to you also. Uh-huh. Sure that it will. The, the question is, will it project a vacation balance out to March if they're putting in a request for March? I'm not sure if it can do that for hourly employees because their accrual is based on their hours worked and paid. But um, let me check um, schedule and project. that and find out for you. Like I said, I, I was pretty sure that it does for people that have a set schedule. It might, if you're using schedules, be able to project out a vacation balance because you've got a schedule in there. So we'll find out for sure, though, okay? This was so hard for me to test because I don't know your jobs and I don't know how things work in your house. So I'm just testing to the my best guesses, but that's something that didn't occur to me. So is there a They were go. They got lost when I went back to help Jody. <laughs> they were like, I know, and I was like, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have let her roam. I thought. know. I am sorry. It just kept had the feeble. So I've got a bunch more, more good questions, and I'll make sure I get them out. Sure. For those of you on the phone, 
she's talking to other people, but I wanted to let you know you can use this URL. I'm going to send it. I don't know if you have access to it, but I'm going to send it to you right after this meeting. It will go out to all managers. You can continue to get on the train site and look at all your folks and, and fool around with it as long as you want until Sunday. And then Monday, you'll get live URL. You'll have to go in and log in, very similar to the way I'll tell you how to log in. Um, but it will be a different company name, but you'll still log in the same way, and then you will have to reset your password on Monday because it's a totally different site. So if you want, you know, um, I'll send it to you. I have, let's say I wrote everybody's name down.